everybody. Um, my name is Scott Lambiasi. I'm your town manager, and welcome to Town Manager's Corner. Uh, as most of you are probably aware by now, uh, the, these segments that I've been taping with the assistance of AVCAM are to get out and around town, meet the different departments and different department heads, and try and find out you know what's going on with them, introduce them to everybody, and let you know what sort of projects they might have going on. Um, topical discussions on, um, you know, how the pandemic has affected them and, and their operation. So today I'm at the uh, Abington Senior Center Council on Aging, and I am with uh, Director Susan Jusberg, who is our Director of the Council of Aging. Yes. And uh, so could you please tell me a little bit about yourself? So we've been here, we, the building was bought by the town in 2008. I've been here since 2009. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a Legion Hall, and then um, for whatever reason, um, that didn't come to fruition, and the building sat for a little while, and then a church bought the building, and they were here for a few years, uh, quite a few years, and then we, as a town, really needed a senior center for our seniors. We were meeting in some churches, we were meeting at Town Hall, we just wanted our own little building here. And um, it came about. The church wanted to sell it. The town of Abington was gracious enough to buy it for the seniors. Um, we've done a ton of work to the building. We put money into our kitchen to bring it, first of all, up to code, but also to be able to do meals here. Uh, we do homemade meals on Tuesdays, or we used to before the pandemic. Um, and we're still cooking meals as of now. We cook a couple of times. We, we deliver over 200 meals a week. Oh, so you, you, you are still doing We're still meals doing on this. We're, we do a Meals on Wheels program. We also do meals for um, seniors that are uh, not on our Meals on Wheels program, but are home um, by themselves. We, we try to call all our seniors that are home. We try to keep, keep our business going. And so you, you, you know, throughout this, you've kept tabs on your seniors and we have. made sure that, you know, they're making it through this strange period it's um, um it's it's been a it's been a challenge in the beginning um one of the reasons why we have senior centers in the for, for the seniors is because they we want them to socialize we don't want them home alone we want we have a ton of services here but the it's loneliness they we want them to socialize um and it's been difficult in this pandemic for them to you know, have that connection. So we send out cards, we call people, we give out our home's numbers, our cell phone numbers to our seniors um, that they can call anytime and just touch base with us. Uh, we did a great thing. Um, my staff got dressed up and we drove around to all the senior housing developments and also to a couple of the seniors that are home by themselves. Uh, and we dressed up, I dressed up as the Easter Bunny <laughs> and you know gave out some right. Easter eggs so we're still making those connections we did a, a socially distant um, cookout at I both of the senior mm -hmm. housings um, right before Memorial Day and they loved it they had a great time they got to see people that they haven't seen even though they're still living in the same community um, some of my seniors were afraid to even leave their apartments and you know they're still a little bit cautious now but now I think they feel a little bit better that they can, you know, put their chairs outside and still socially distance, still wear their mask, still be safe. Um, the weather's changing right now, so. Yeah, so with, with the weather changing, um, you know, we still have our, you know, a couple of months, we have fall ahead of us and, and September is typically a, a nice warm weather month. Do you have any activities or plans that might um, take place in those? We do, actually. Um, the first, we're opening with limited capacity at the Senior Center starting September 8th to come for an activity, whether it's cribbage, um, we have a new computer room, we do have our gym with new, um, new equipment that was donated to us, so we're very excited about that. Um, we're still doing our meals, um, but we can only have 20 people in the building at one time. And they have to sign up ahead of time for any activity, we're gonna be really strict about that. Um, we don't want to be in trouble with anyone. Yeah. Um, but we're also going to do a couple of things outside. We are going to do movie nights with a blow-up projector that we just um, acquired. Great. And show some movies for our seniors and also for our young people. 
Oh, be, a that'd lot be of the a kids will come down and have um, movie night, and that will be coming to fruition pretty soon. We have a brand new parking lot that's being done as we speak, so that's exciting. And um, we're, ha we're waiting for that. And yeah. <laughs> we have a brand new roof that the town, um, we got a grant for that, right. and it was wonderful. We definitely need a new roof after all these years with a you know, little bit of leaks here and there. So we're, we're moving forward. We're, our activities are still going forward. We are still doing a lot of Shine. Shine is senior insurance. Um, our open enrollment starts in October and it runs into the beginning of December. That's going to gear up. Uh, fuel assistance is coming in November 1st. We are open for that. We have been open through this whole pandemic. We have not closed. We are closed to the public, but our, my staff has been working extra hard to make sure everything is cleaned and sanitized and we're seeing our clients, we're calling our clients, we're, um, our faces are everywhere. Yeah, and you said you're providing the meals. How many meals did you say you were? Um, for a week, we're, it's over 200. We deliver over 25 meals to different individuals. All they have to do is call if they want a meal. And for the most part, a lot of our clients, it's nice for us, for them to see a happy face. We leave it in a cooler, we socially distance, we give a wave. Um, I'm always in senior housing waving to the seniors. And they like it. They, you know, they don't want to be forgotten, and they, they don't want to be um, stuck in their apartments without anybody caring. We're always in senior housing. Great. Now, and like you said, you know, the the parking lot is, um, you know, going to be fully renovated and restored, yes. um, and that that should be done, um, hopefully by the time this airs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Um, and and. So, and you were able to get a new roof with, um, with grant money, yes. which was fabulous. Do you see any other uh, potential projects? Um, you know, I know that you're, you're sort of a campus here where you also have a dog park on one side and, and our world-class pickleball association is over on the other side. And I know that, that that's a huge draw. That is um, a huge draw. Um, pickleball, we're actually um, the only town around the area that with, with six courts. And we just put lights in this year. So we can, go, we can play pickleball probably oh till the end of November, hopefully, you know, if the weather stays with us and we don't get a, you know, an early snow or frost. But um, that is a big draw, that seniors getting out, exercising, um, socializing is a huge. And, but who do, who do they coordinate those activities with the signing up for pickleball? It's pickleball, they have their own they association. Their own. So you'll have to call and... and um, so they shouldn't reach out to the senior center? They shouldn't. I will ask you any questions yeah. that you have, but for <laughs> but the most part, pickleball it's, takes care of yeah. um, pickleball and their membership. Yeah. Um, the dog park is open 24 hours a day. There has been a huge activity with the dog park, and they, got, um, they were able to get grants to for build that, their yeah. dog park, and they... They had a um, fundraisers. They just recently had a big fundraiser. Yeah, great. And again, though, that you know, although you share the campus and, and it's your campus, ultimately they are sort of their own they sort group, of, and any yes. questions or concerns should be directed towards yes, absolutely that, the, the friends of the dog park. Yes, the friends of the yes. dog park. Great. And um, I just want to point out that in the beginning of this whole pandemic, we um, we were trial and error, like everybody. Um, yeah. trying to figure out how we were going to get food to our seniors. This was back in March. Um, we had a ton of donations from the community, and we had a ton of donations from the food pantry. And we were actually so grateful that the Abington police officers were able to deliver when we couldn't. Yeah, that's amazing. And we did probably 60 um, boxes every other week for about six weeks. Wow. So, you know, they... Abington is a great community. Um, when help is needed, we all come together. As you know, um, your staff is great. They've yeah. been wonderful to me. They've been wonderful to our seniors. They've been so supportive. And I can't thank my staff enough to be um, you know, riding this crazy train with me <laughs> and, uh, and trying, to, you know, trying to maneuver when um, it changes every day. The rules change every day. Um, our information is changing. I'd like to point out um, in October we will be having a flu clinic. We will be having it here. We will be having it at both senior housings. And I believe Chestnut Glen is going to be a part of that. Great. We will physically go there so um, the seniors will be able to get a flu shot. 
victory because it's very important to get one this year. More it is very year. important to get one this year. So yeah. we will come to them instead of them coming to us, but we will have one here public. Great. And that is open to anyone. Um, as far as our, our insurance or our, you know, our outreach, that is open to anyone who needs a little help. That's not just for seniors. Right. Um, we do a lot of fuel assistance here. That is open to everyone. And I just want to make sure that we, we kind of are the catch-all for a lot of these projects. And we can, if we can't deliver um, a message or, or help someone, we can find a way to get the information to you. Great. And, you know, we're all looking forward to seeing yeah, a lot I'm, of activity here again. I know I'm looking forward to, you know, when things are open and, and you know, uh, I definitely want to have a you know, maybe a monthly coffee hour down here. Where Absolutely, they love it. And meet with everybody. Uh, it's kind of the toughest part of this pandemic is just not being able to right. be fully accessible. Um, so uh, definitely looking forward to that and, you know, seeing all the wonderful stuff that's going on down here. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell everybody? Um, I would like to tell everyone if uh, we can be of help, we are here every day. Our, if we're not here, our phones are forwarded to our cell phones. Uh, so you can reach us at 781-982-2145. Um, extension one is myself and transportation. Two is Amy Barrett, she does all our shine and outreach. Three is Michelle Robeson, she does our Meals on Wheels. And if you press four, you'll get me directly. Awesome, and you know, again, as I've gone through um, some of these department meetings and meeting with the department heads and um, different um, organizations, I, I am finding, as you said, that it is such an amazing group of people to work with and they, the, um, the organization itself, they just love working together and, yeah. and collaborating and uh, getting, getting through this time. So it, it really is good. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you all for watching and listening in and uh, look forward to our next segment. And not sure where that will be, but I'm thinking it might be the fire station. So we'll see. So until then, take care.